Hey everybody, welcome back to the Neighborhood. I'm your host, Oscar, and to the right of me is my lovely wife and co-host, Elma. And we have another awesome episode for you guys. You know how it is, always bring in the good Reddit stories. The theme of this episode is, what an unexpected twist. Okay, I'm excited. So, this is actually, this was a really, really fun episode to build. I really enjoyed it, and I have awesome stories for you guys. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, y'all better sit down. Better sit down, grab a cup of coffee, whatever it is, wherever you're at right now on this beautiful Monday morning and uh, or Monday night, whenever you guys are hearing this. And uh, because this is a long episode. So get ready for it. Ready to jump in? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and start with the first story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to stop kissing my own baby? My husband, male 25, and I, female 25, have a six-week-old daughter. She's our first baby and the first grandchild in both of our families. We were advised by our pediatrician to not allow anyone besides ourselves to kiss our baby for the first 8 or 12 weeks minimum. This has been communicated to both of our families who have been respectful of this, as well as other boundaries and slash rules that we set, despite a little bit of grumbling about it from his side. Last weekend, we were over at my in-law's house and I had just finished breastfeeding my daughter, so she was all sleepy. I kissed her forehead before setting her to her nap on my chest. My mother-in-law noticed and immediately remarked on it in a super passive-aggressive manner saying, Oh, I'm so glad that we're able to kiss baby now. Did your pediatrician update the rules? I was super confused and asked her what she meant and that the pediatrician's recommendations had not changed. She then accused me of violating the rules by kissing my own baby. I told her that the recommendation was that no one besides myself and my husband kiss our own daughter. And she argued and heavily implied that I was being dishonest because I had previously said nobody can kiss the baby. Rather than nobody but husband and I can kiss the baby. She went on and on about this until I snapped that it should have been obvious that the rules we told her regarding our baby were about what we would slash wouldn't allow other people to do. She called me a hypocrite, so I got up and shut myself in the guest room while my daughter continued to nap on me. A little while later, mother-in-law came in and apologized, claiming it was a knee-jerk reaction and she was just confused and upset. She said she understands now that the rule only applies to other people. She then asked me if I would avoid kissing my baby in front of her until she's allowed to do so as well because it's upsetting to see me doing that and knowing that she just can't. I told her I can understand that it's frustrating to have a strong urge to kiss a baby and not be able to, but I am personally not going to stop kissing my own baby for the sake of her feelings. Mother-in-law is calling me disrespectful and a hypocrite and has gotten sister-in-law on board with this as well. Am I the a-hole? Oh, gosh. Uh, I just, up? I feel so sad for people that don't have a good family. <laughs> yeah, that's like a little bit. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like everyone loves the baby, you know? Yeah. So that's a good thing. Well, loves the baby a little too much, in my opinion. But, <laughs> but how do you, how do people feel entitled to other people's kids? What I want to know is how do people feel the urge to kiss a baby? Never have in my life ever had the urge to kiss a baby, like in the forehead or anything, right? Um, I I just that's not something in my in my urges, like you know, mm. like have you ever urged to kiss a baby? Not urge to kiss a baby, but for example, my cousin's uh, little baby, Marisolo. Yeah. I love him so much, yeah. and every time I see him, I just, I just want to be around him. I just want to. Well, yeah, like be, I get I it. I want to hug him. Yeah, you know? that's fine, but not kiss him. No, but the point is that I think that's the same urge. You mm -hmm. know, I, I, it's, I don't They're know. They're cute. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna front. <laughs> A baby is kind of cute once, you know, they, they get off the ugly stages, right? Yeah. Like, once they can walk. Yeah, or, or at least getting there, right? They're cute. I'm not gonna front. Um, but. You have to know boundaries. It's not your kid, you know? And you have to be respectful. Like, I, okay, it's going to sound mess up, man. But I feel like they're someone's property, okay? The babies and kiddos are someone's property. And just the way I wouldn't go into someone's house and, like, mess around with their computers or whatever, I'm not going to go into somebody's house and mess around with the babies or kids. Like, I'm, yo, that's your kid. I don't want to accidentally break it, you know? That's yours. Mm. So if someone's like, hey, these are the rules. When you come to my house... Don't touch my computer and don't even touch the mouse and don't move my computer monitors. I get it. 
same thing if Who someone's does like that? i don't know weirdos <laughs> you know um uh, or like it could be something that's more like relatable okay when you come to a house you're not allowed to go into my fridge okay don't go into my fridge and don't take my food right also who does that <laughs> just crazy people bro <laughs> whatever right um and so this should be the same thing with babies the delivery man just like <laughs> just comes Amazon out, oh, just... being like no 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 here's your stuff and like do not come into my fridge <laughs> <laughs> do not touch my food do not just move my mouse pad <laughs> all right lady <laughs> i mean it'd be funny the other way too you just amazon delivery guy comes in and then you open the door and he's just like here's your package man just walks in <laughs> opens your fridge <laughs> takes like a coke out <laughs> like, oh God, that's a hard date today you know it's like all right doesn't even finish it just leaves in the counter and leaves <laughs> that'd be crazy yeah I, i'm just saying like you don't go in people's houses and mess with their properties you know you don't do that mm -hmm. so it should be the same thing with the babies like you don't mess with people's babies you leave them alone If that's the rule, if you're allowed to like hug him and stuff, then cool, you know, kudos. But if not, then just chill, you know. My question is: This person that wrote the story, OP, did not give us enough information. I want to know your relationship with your mother-in-law mm. before you had a baby, before or even during pregnancy. Yeah. You know, has she shown this level of, I don't know. Has she's always been like intruding into your relationship and intruding into your stuff? Yeah, what kind of relationship yeah. do you have with her? What kind of person do you like think of her as? Uh, because if it really is, she just loves this kid so much, and maybe it's the first grandchild, and she just really wants to hold the baby, kiss the baby, and all these things. Yeah, I would give her a pass. I feel like I, I kind of get it too, because I feel like this is this is like a foretelling of what your mom's gonna be like. My mom? I th yeah. I think your mom's going to want to, like, when we have kiddos, uh -huh. I think your mom's going to want to spend, like, 24-7 with them. Yeah. She literally would, like, feel, like, um, fear of missing out if the kiddo did anything and she was not there, you know? And she has been wanting a grandkid for yeah. ages. Yeah. I wonder yeah. if she would have a hard time with me placing boundaries of, like, no one sees the kid for a month. Oh. Because, um, first of all, I don't know if I would do that just because... The way that we grew up is very not restricted. It's yeah. it's very freeing. And I don't know, like, for example, my mom grew up in a ranch, right? And it's not like anyone there was like, my mom grew up, yeah. my mom was born in a room in her house. It's crazy. You know, I don't think anyone there was like, oh, all the germs and yeah. all this stuff. Like there's cows and pigs and chicken all around. If anything, it probably like made your mom more like what's the uh, immune the immunity like her immunity is like uh, off the roof i think there's something to that like yeah. for the same reason you're a little lactose intolerant you know yeah. i'm a whole lactose intolerant bro. yeah it's i'm not and i think a lot of it has to do with i don't know well, I, 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 i grew up going to the rancho yeah. and just being able to like drink all the goat's milk or something <laughs> just whatever milk comes out is what you drink yeah yeah, yeah maybe that's it i mean i didn't get hit with lactose up until i, I was my um uh 20s i know not your 20s no uh my teenage like a teenage and above i would yeah. say with Is yo that's, you know what's crazy 13 20s that's just how yeah, yeah. difference. yeah it's because i forgot but you know what's crazy though just uh look, okay a little bit of a, a rant here mm -hmm. and this might be crazy to you all you people out there <laughs> as a kid like i'm talking like eight years old i used to fill gatorade bottles with milk and take them out with me and drink milk on my throughout my day like you know people take water bottles <laughs> like this oh <laughs> you know people take water bottles. Uh -huh. now think of a gator bottle like the big ones i'm talking about like big sizes and the thicky ones bro like the power aid bottles too just fill them up with like milk and throughout the day i would just carry my milk around and just drink my milk ain't that crazy dude what the heck i don't know and that was like i was fine yo i used to man i used to love milk i think you need to Just keep drinking milk. I just gotta go back to the olden days, fill the parade bottles with milk, and see how it goes. I, I I think there's something to that. I think you can get rid of your. I think I can. I just I, at this point I I'm also like health conscious, and I'm like milk is bad for you with how much sugar is in there. Uh, so there's I don't. Sugar in milk. There's a hell of sugar in milk. But there's sugar in milk. <laughs> yes, dude. <laughs> so I don't want to. Is there sugar but, in breast milk? I'm not gonna ask that. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I don't know. <laughs> Where do you get? Milk? Yes, dude. There's hella sugar in milk. There's so much sugar in milk. Like, like naturally. Tons. No, like the milk we buy at the store. 
Okay, okay. But yeah. naturally... I don't know. <laughs> I never dissect like, the natural huh? milk and be like, oh, yeah, look at the sugar. Like, Dude, I'm like, we're not plants, you know? Plants okay. produce uh, sugar glucose. And yeah, yeah. I'm like, cows up in here? I don't know, man. Does it taste sugary when you drink out of a cow? No. Then, then no, probably. It's fucking delicious. <laughs> then we probably just added sugar ourselves, but that's what I'm saying. Like, it's crazy, you know? Okay, okay. okay. Back to the story, yeah. though. My <laughs> point is, I, I think maybe my mom would have a struggle yeah. uh, with boundaries, but I also don't think that I would be one to place boundaries like that. I get that. And I also want to I want to throw this in here, because I'd be questioning things now mm-hmm. after the whole milk conversation. Mm-hmm. How come other people can't kiss the baby, but you can like well, what, isn't it all germs people's lips have been on yo but where have my lips been on dude like my lips what? i be drinking I orange mean, juice I don't know where your lips have been on. <laughs> yo i be drinking orange juice i don't know where the thing came you know sometimes i just like slide my lips through the counter wait, just wait, to see wait, how wait, it feels wait. you know did you just say you'd be drinking orange juice like out of the carton <laughs> okay I, pineapple juice but yes i i know that you don't like pineapple juice but i love it so i bought my own bottle of pineapple yeah. juice and uh, yo, it's freeing. I just be drinking the pineapple juice off the bout- bottle. I don't even use a, a glass. I just drink the, and then I put it back, and then I you're not more. even birding it. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I ain't I doing no birding. I just drink it off the thing, dude. It's my own bottle. Nobody's gonna drink out of that. Yes, but like how you said, yeah. Some okay, okay. I don't know how the assembly line works. I'm sure that some <laughs> machine like screws on the lid onto yeah. that, right? But just some someone, guy that licks it no, <laughs> just stop randomly. It. but someone okay. at yeah. the store is opening these boxes and yeah. grabbing yeah these bottles and stocking them i just don't care yo you okay. know what else other thing too okay uh, this is being Not transparent. allowed to kiss baby okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is being super kidding. transparent and i don't know maybe you guys maybe one of you guys suffer from this too um uh, but your boy eats my nails i don't, I don't eat it i chew my nails like crazy, right? Yeah, you I have get, a problem. I have a problem. I have a problem, man. Yeah. But and um I, I chew my nails, whatever, right? And then, you know. But the thing is, and the thing that I've become disgusted with I, myself. Okay, before before you continue, okay. I feel betrayed. Okay. okay. I feel like catfished. I don't know <laughs> what you would call it. But okay. when I first met you, yeah. The l- literally within the first like ten seconds that I met you. Yeah. You I was sitting down at prom yeah. you asked me to dance right sure you put did. your hand on the table and it cut me off guard so the first thing i saw was your nails and you know what was the first thing i thought he grooms his nails <laughs> like like way to go because yeah. both my brothers Shout are out. not the best of that you know yeah and i was like awesome and then you find out my first impression truth. of you was <laughs> was a lie hey man it's still they look nice dude you don't groom your nose you bite your nose well yeah it's like an anxious like tick like as soon as they come out i'm like i need to get rid of this kind of thing so they yeah. always look yeah, small same. same i struggle especially when i'm uh, typing i i hate the feel of it but so you, you know it. what i do yeah i know it's mm-hmm. tough man i but my point is like um uh, i put this, a filer right next to your desk no work it's no i use it sometimes i'm I, i'm trying to beat it dude i'm not like not trying to it's hard you know uh, i'm an addict it is what it is you know but this is the part that i'm gonna say it's disgusting and this is where i'm saying like i shouldn't be allowed to kiss our baby with this motherfucking lips because okay <laughs> okay <laughs> maybe other people's lips are even cleaner than my lips dude because okay i'd be going to the to the gym mm-hmm. and this is so nasty man i'm going to the gym and then I'm I'm picking up dumbbells that other sweaty ass guys are picking up. Okay, sweaty motherfuckers are picking up these dumbbells, and I'm grabbing them. I'm doing push ups on the floor. I'm like just wiping here and left. Yo, sweat, Ugh. wiping right. And then I leave the gym, and sometimes, and I'm making like a conscious decision not to do this, right? But sometimes I I accidentally forget. I'm like, oh, let me bite this nail, and I'm like, oh man, this is disgusting. I just had like a million germs in my mouth because. I just bit my nail that I was in the gym. So, like, I shouldn't be allowed to kiss that motherfucking baby. I feel like I feel like the the pedi- pediatrician shouldn't... You were like, definitely the one that got us COVID. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna... Pro- probably. But I feel like a pediatrician shouldn't say, like, hey, no one's allowed to kiss, kiss your baby unless there's, like, some, something deeper to it. It should be, like, nobody with nasty-ass mouths should kiss the baby. Or, like, rinse it or clean okay. it with toothpaste I or something. I definitely remember this for when you get home from the gym. I, I i i give my best effort to not do it yeah i've also given seen you give your best effort and not biting them for the past <laughs> seven years it's tough out here man all right 
<laughs> but that's my take on it. I feel like it should be, it, it's not about who the person is. It's about how clean their mouths are, you know? Okay. <laughs> End of the story, I would forgive this mom. She came, apologized, and I would, first offender, you know, you get a pass. Second time offender, we have a problem. Yeah, third body blow to a death, right? That's how it goes. <laughs> okay. All right, next story. Am I the hijo for abandoning my daughter on vacation? My wife and I have always dreamt of celebrating our 40th anniversary with a luxurious vacation, just the two of us. We're living the romance of our early years. We had it all planned out for years now, and we're excited beyond words. Enter our adult daughter, Jane. Jane and her husband got wind of our plans and promptly invited themselves and their two children, nine female and five male, along. I originally put my foot down and told them this trip was just for us, which upset her some. But my wife has a hard time saying no to Jane, as she is the youngest of our children and our only daughter. And she didn't want to hurt her feelings, so she reluctantly agreed to let them join. I wasn't thrilled about it at the time, but I wanted to make my family happy. And I knew my wife was also okay with the idea of a family trip. Even if she was heartbroken, we wouldn't get our romantic trip. We went along with it. The place we were originally going was not child-friendly, so we changed our courses and decided on an all-inclusive family resort. We paid for the resort and our grandchildren's plane tickets. Jane and her husband only had to pay for their own airfare. Here's where things got complicated. As the vacation got closer, I started having a change of heart. I realized that our 40th anniversary was a once-in-a-lifetime milestone, and I wanted to honor it in a way that was true to our original plans. My wife and I might not be able to afford a trip like this again for quite some time, and it's something we always want to do. So, without consulting anyone, I switched our ticket last minute to go to the romantic destination that my wife and I had originally planned for. I did not tell Jane or her husband. I didn't even tell my wife until the day before the flight, which was a day before Jane's flight left for their vacation. It wasn't an easy decision, and I feel guilty about it, but I wanted our 40th anniversary to be the special, intimate celebration we had always hoped for. We called Jane after we landed to tell her, and she was extremely upset to say the least. She seemed of the idea that we were going to look after our grandkids so she and her husband could have alone time. And now that I abandoned her, they would have to do it all themselves. I hung up on them when my son-in-law started shouting, and my wife and I enjoyed the rest of our trip. They come back the same day we did, but have not answered any of our texts, and Jane seems to be ignoring me. My wife told me she vastly preferred our trip to the family trip we would have taken, but she still doesn't like how Jane is mad at us and wants me to apologize. I'm not sure I want to, after learning Jane and her husband were using us for free babysitting and a free trip, but I feel like I should just keep the peace. Am I the a-hole for changing our trip destination last minute and leaving Jane and her family to fend for themselves? This whole family seems like a new whole family. How come? Okay, you're going to celebrate your 40 years and you suck this hard about communication? I guess you're right on that. Yeah, there's like two two red flags there. Like, why do you suck at communication? And also, why uh, is your wifey like so softy? Like, man up, bro. You're 40 now. Like, or wh woman wife up? I don't know. <laughs> Everything's all good, right? Just get something tougher up. skin. Yeah, yeah, something up. Whatever it is. <laughs> Get tougher skin and just tell your daughter that you hate her and not to show up, you know? Okay. I am very curious. I wouldn't ever want to look into the future. But if I could, okay. I wonder kind of what kind of parents we're going to be. I don't think I would be the mom in this case. I, I don't know how to put it. It sounds messed up. But just the way that I see moms usually be so attached to their kids. Yeah. Maybe it's because I'm not a mom that I don't feel like that. I think that might be it. Yeah, true. But I also feel like I'm just not the type of person. You know, I think I know my mom would have loved for me to stay home and not move out with you for... She would love for me to still live with her to this yeah. day. I don't think I want my kids living with me. <laughs> past 18. Past 18. You yeah. know? But again, I'm not a mom. So I'm very curious. Uh, and I'm curious to see if maybe I'm right and I, I wouldn't feel that way. And you would. And you would be like, oh, but, you know, our kid wants to come yeah. along. I don't think I'm going to be that type of dad either. Because you're a peacemaker, though. I am a peacemaker, but... I, I said that with, like, a disgust face. 
<laughs> I don't mean it like that. Yo, what's up, man? <laughs> like, you're a peacemaker. <laughs> no, I, I do like keeping the peace. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to front. But I don't like when things mess with my fun. I am very all about my fun. I like having fun. Mm-hmm. This is it. And if something doesn't let me have my fun, I'm like, not, I'm not down. Like, I'm not going to do that. So, unless I, re- I really like our kids, like, which hopefully. I'm, well, hopefully I like them, right? But, like, we have friends, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I like going and doing friends activities. I love friendship, right? Mm-hmm. But sometimes I just want to be with you. Like, sometimes I just want to be, like, just you and me. And I wouldn't, if it's one of those times where I just want us to be together, I wouldn't let our friends just tag along all you the time. Wouldn't? Not, not, unless I, unless I'm one of that kind of fun. I think 90% of the time, whatever you and I are doing, you rather have other people there. Yes, because like <laughs> I have, I think, I think the more the merrier, it's more fun. Mm-hmm. That's my thought on there, right? Because I like group events. I love, you know what? Dare I say, I love group events. I, I, just, I think they're fun. They're like <gasps> really extremely fun. <laughs> I know, I know I wasn't going to say it on, on, on camera, but I just, I can't help it. I love group events, right? Um, I think it's really, really fun. I, I enjoy when a lot of people come together and it's like uh, there's more minds, more festivities, more dumbness. There's just more of everything and it's fun. That being said, though, like I, I feel like for kids, if I want to have a romantic getaway with just you, mm-hmm. then I don't, I'm not going to like just allow our kids to hop in whenever they want to hop in. Like, no, I want to like spend time with my woman. you know, mm-hmm. I don't want our kiddos there even more. I don't want our kiddos with their grandchildren there for like just to disrupt our yeah, fun that was so messed up that yeah. you need to have i don't know you already messed up with that child <laughs> yo <laughs> <laughs> to treat your parents like that yeah that's like so mules. messed up oh i don't know about that one but yeah just oh i'm gonna hijack your romantic getaway because of me doing that we're gonna need to stay somewhere else because where you want to go is not child friendly um and then i'm gonna have you babysit so i just turned this into an event you're kind of still paying for but it's for me and my husband yeah and you're the babysitters also yo who's out here snitching dude who's out here snitching bro Mm -hmm. how did the daughter know that I they mean, were gonna go because that's not the problem you should be able to tell your kid right. uh, when you're catching up oh yeah dad though. and i have a like a celebration kind of thing we're gonna do yeah yeah hey, all right all right saying there's better not be no rats up in this family all right but yeah i think i think i think you're right i think everybody does like here because they he should have communicated better because at the end of the day like you could have just put your foot down too man like i get it it's a relationship like it's you and your wife as the mom and dad to these kiddos Mm -hmm. but sometimes i feel like one of the uh one of the people participating in the two in the relationship relationship can put their foot down for both of those like there's definitely been times where you put the foot down for something and i'm like whatever you know like that's it and there's times where i put the foot down for something i'm like that's how it gotta be you know and I think it has, to, and that's just how sometimes you manage a relationship. Like sometimes one of you can be stronger for the both of you, you know. And if your mama or not your mom, your wifey is the one being like, yeah, let all the kids in, let everybody come in, bring the dog, whatever, right? And she's all softy like that, bro. Just say, hey, nah, it ain't it. Y'all chill. It's only me and my wifey going to this trip, and that's it. I think he was wrong for not even telling his wife. Clearly, she does lack the backbone yeah because she said oh i enjoy this way more than if i we had gone over there yeah but she i don't know it's maybe just just a mom thing you know she's willing to put herself her her needs or her wants before your kiddos on top of her kids yeah i just bringing it back i really am curious of what kind of parents we're gonna be just because i maybe i'm wrong but i think my parents would rather uh, the kids be around than not. I feel like my parents don't have a lot of friends. Like, it's just them two, and maybe, like, a couple. Like, maybe, like, two or two at most, probably. So they don't, they only have their kids, you know, to have fun with. And I feel like, I'm not sure about your, your. I mean, your mom has you know, recently, <laughs> like, just started kind of blooming, just making friends everywhere, you know? I know, my mom has always had friends. Okay, well, your mom has always had friends. Um, and I don't know about your dad. But it, your dad seems like a more close off person. Like, he wouldn't just want to party with anybody, right? Yeah. So, I feel like that's why your parents, before their kiddos around, 
And I think that's why my parents prefer their kiddos around. But I feel like for us, I want to think that when we're like 40 or whatever, we're still going to have like hella friends or something or mm -hmm. just have, you know, like our circles. So we won't have to rely on our kids. I feel like normal functioning families don't have to rely on their kids. I think it also to has fun. to do with the fact that like our parents didn't really even have a childhood. Yeah. You know, like my mom started working at 13. My dad started working like at 11 so, and yeah. not really ever stopped, you know. Yeah um and then had kids and i think a lot of i don't know what it is lack of uh mentorship or education on relationships yeah they were kind of taught or believe that your kids go first and once they got kids their relationship was second and yeah in my a parents culture thing. Uh, yeah in my parents situation it ended up being my kids are first and then their relationship fell apart you know yeah so I think it might have a lot to do with that, that once the parents that do stay together, like mine didn't, but yours did, they're still are work, 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 and they take care of our kids, even though they really only have one kid at home now, because um, she's <laughs> 13, Yeah, you know, um, they don't, don't leave room for their relationship. Yeah, I think that's definitely what my parents are lacking, and uh, I feel like they're not alone. They probably, uh, there's a lot of parents out there that are probably lacking that. Yeah, so I think, <laughs> I don't think we're going to be these parents. I don't think so either. But happen back to the story. My 40th year anniversary is you and up. me, baby. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, we're going to get turned. <laughs> uh, we're going to have a fun time. But let us know. Let us let us know how you guys would have reacted on this. Like, do you feel like the dad or the mom was a little too soft? And would you have put your foot down? Or would you parents have done something? Parents out there, you know? have you been in situations like That's that? That's true. Do you struggle with saying no to your kids? Or mm -hmm. do you actually genuinely prefer them being there? Yep. And I know you guys are out there. I see our demographic. You guys are... You guys are you guys are old enough to be having kids now, so <laughs> so let us know how you guys I feel, right? I where that was gonna go. Like, are you about to insult? <laughs> no, man, yo, y'all youngins, all right? But uh, but you guys are definitely old enough to have kids. At least our demographic is, you know. So let us know how you guys feel. Uh, but ready to move over to the next story? About? Mm -hmm. Okay, next story, and this one is a long one, all right? So sit down, you know, grab your coat. Just make sure it's not like in the floor somewhere, and. Get ready to jump into the story. Should I be condemned for beating a partner at ping pong? I'm a rising second year student associate at a larger mid-sized firm, and one of the partners hosted a ping pong tournament at his house for anyone who wanted to join. Apparently, this firm has had several of these tournaments in the past, and a different partner, who is very high up and well-respected, has been the reigning champion of the firm. Well, I grew up playing ping pong as I had a table in my house for a very long time. I'm certainly no professional, but I like to think that I may be better than the average person who didn't grow up playing like I did. Anyway, I made it to the championship and I had to face this partner. Wasn't very scared. I ended up giving him the smackdown 21 of 7. We shook hands afterwards and celebrated with everyone. And I thought everything was cool. Fast forward to now, a week later. And this guy hasn't spoken to me since. Every time we cross paths in the office, he looks at me and looks the other way. Some of the other partners have begun to shy away from me as well. It seems pretty obvious to me that I'm being shunned. Did I screw up my return offer? Was this guy just never really that good to begin with and people just let him win to preserve his ego? Should I have gone easy on him? To be fair, I'm a KJD. By the way, if you guys don't know what that is. You know yeah, for is? the people out there. Yeah, for the people out there. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely did not Google this. Uh, KJD is somebody who goes through, like, basically their, their educational life all through, I guess, like, high school, then college. And right as soon as out of college, they go to their career. That's okay. what my understanding of it is. So Right. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, right. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. To be fair, I'm a KJD, and this guy is easily approaching 70 years old. How do I fix this? Never imagined I'd become the office pariah for being good at something. Oh my gosh. Yo, wait it out, baby. Come on. Tell me you're no, just kidding. No. Yo, accidentally sneeze on this guy. You're good. You're chilling, dude. You're so rude. Bro. Add a little few extra steps on the freaking you know. I don't know. You might be right. None of my grandparents made it to Oh, I have one grandparent left. Yo, he's going strong, dude. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a toughie. That's a toughie. I, I, I hate co corporate America for this reason. Dude, have fun. I'm a very competitive person. 
Yes. Every yes. game. Yes. Okay. Okay. Every game that I play, I play it to win. Yeah. And That's people facts. like you, babe, get on my nerves because yeah, the first sniff, the first hint that you're not gonna win, you kind of give up the game. Yeah, I'm like, ah, it's not worth it at this point. You know, like I know what I know the future. I know what's gonna happen here. So yeah. lame, dude. I've been uh. in those situations and come out winning. <laughs> all right, all right. What you're not, we? you're not wrong. All right, go ahead. Yeah. What's your point? My point is, people that aren't competitive and people that are competitive can play together and both have a good time. Because at the end of the day, I want to win. That's true. But I'm okay losing. I'll act like I'm a sore loser sometimes. But like, I just want to have fun with people. Yeah. I don't need to win. I will always strive to win. Yeah. But I don't need to win. And people need to stop doing these stupid games with like people that can't handle it. This is not the first story that I hear of. Like, yeah. I just. My boss took me out to play golf or whatever, and then like I beat him, and now yeah, no, he, like, I purposely lost to him. Oh, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's even worse. People revert back to kids. I swear. I, I in feel the like worst it's, ways. It's worse that like I, I get that, and that does is it is bad. But I think even worse is when like the boss like ma- basically makes your job harder because their ego is hurt. Yeah. You know, like. I don't know. That's annoying. I, I, I'm I not going to throw shade again <laughs> here, but I feel like I had a ball. You know what? Huh? Go to the gym. Touch those stuff. Oh, go yeah. to his office and touch the bro, pants. everything. How about <laughs> get some gym sweat on y'all? <laughs> <laughs> bro, get that bacteria up in your system, dog. <laughs> Give you a month left. No. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All jokes here. But um, I actually had a, a boss um, uh, like back, back in my early days of working. Mm-hmm. Um, that I upset Oof, him way, 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 way back. <laughs> yeah, way back. Yo, I'm the youngest person in life, right? I don't. Uh-huh. It's not that way back, okay? Um, I had a boss who I upset him, and he just stopped scheduling me as much. Like legit, that was so annoying. Like I, I, I remember, um, I remember that I upset him, and then at the next like, and I, and I had a feeling, dude. I had a gut feeling. This, this was back when I was working like, um, at fast food. So your schedule oh, is not set yeah, in place. Yeah, yeah. Your schedule is like, you know, whenever you land is whenever you land. But I was still getting my hours. You know, I was still getting like my, I think it was like at that time I was going to college. So like 20 hours a week or something. Mm-hmm. And as soon as like he, I, I upset him and I had a gut feeling, he just stopped scheduling me. I, I, I think he brought me down to like eight hours, dude. Like eight, like six to eight hours. You were also and, the only male coworker. Yeah. So he was favoriting. He definitely had a favorite, like favoriting the female coworkers there. So... This guy was just, oh, man, the worst. But, like, it just sucks when a boss has that much power that they can just reduce your hours. Yeah. And, like, dude, yo, I need to, like, at the time I was riding the bus and stuff. Or or even then I got a car eventually and I had to pay for gas. I'm like, dude, I'm, I need to pay for gas, bro. Like, yeah. I need to, like, you're literally destroying my life right now. Like, I need my hours, you know? So it sucks when they got that much power. Yeah. Uh, advice? I don't got any. I say stand your ground, dude. Like, from the sound of it, you're a KJD. Which that's a big deal around this parks. Maybe I don't know the. <laughs> I don't know really, but it sounds really good. My point is like stand your ground, bro. Because honestly, this is not the hill that you're gonna die at. Like you got that law school stuff going on, and yo, I ain't gonna front. People need lawyers, homie. And if you're a good one, you're a good one, right? And if you're like already in a law firm, I can only assume, right? I can only assume that they'll take you on a different law firm if you already have some type of like um, experience. If you make it through the whole year. So, you're chilling, bro. Just Eat that little fridge and 70-year-old, man. Keep doing you. You start doing your own tournaments. Never let up. Yeah. And also, you just Always quit. And just play to win. A, Always play to win. Just be, become a ping-pong player and, and then go pro, all right? But I do got updates for the story, okay? Okay, okay. Update one, which was a year later. Oh. I actually ended up getting a return offer last summer, which is good news. So, I returned to the firm this summer for my second year as student associate and had a great time overall. Except for that one ping pong partner being there. The office decided to have an annual ping pong tournament at the end of the summer this year. So I had to deal with the partner's insufferable energy the entire time leading up to it. Last summer after I beat him, he would just look at me and walk the other way. But now he just cows at me. Whenever I see him, he will literally follow me with his eyes until the second I turn a corner. Without saying a word. 
one time I experimented and took a peek back around the corner <laughs> and his eyes were still <laughs> locked onto mine. <laughs> Some of the other partners were telling me that he has spent this entire past school year harrying everyone in the office about how much he's been training. And he has been challenging the attorneys to ping pong matches one by one so that he can continuously assess his improvement. Well, the big day finally came. This time, the partner hosted the tournament at his own house. I'm guessing he wanted even more people to watch him lose again because this time, it seemed like almost the entire office showed up for the tournament. Support staff, spouses, children. There were so many people that everyone couldn't fit in his basement. So we had to set up a camera and stream the matches on his living room TV upstairs. While watching others play, he whispered in my ear and told me that I would have to get through him before receiving a post-grad offer. Of course, he and I ended up being the remaining two players to face each other for the championship. It seems like everyone purposely lost just to see us play. Like I said before, I grew up playing ping pong, so I'm generally not worried about my chances of beating someone. But I'll admit that his menacious looks did start to get in my head a bit this time around. Nonetheless, I did win the championship again. 2118 and received a return offer. But he put a genuine fight that had me on the edge throughout the entire game. It's actually scary how much he improved in just one year. Again, this guy is around 70 years old. Gotta admire the dedication at that age. After the game, he shook my hand with a stern look and said that he's not retiring until he reclaims his title. Honestly, I have so too much... he needs to leave the firm? <laughs> Yo, or he's, he's gonna, you know, <laughs> pick the bucket on that firm, bro. Okay. Honestly, I have too much pride to ever let this man beat me at ping pong. So here's the dilemma. I haven't accepted the offer yet because I'm a good person. I'm wondering whether I should just reject the offer and move on. I'd never be able to live with myself if this guy kicks a bucket as an employee of this firm. But to be honest, he will most likely certainly pass away at this firm if I accept the offer. I do plan on aiming for partner. Should I just reject the offer? Uh, don't people deserve to retire a little before passing away? Nah, dude, accept that offer. Heck yeah, man, take it. Uh, you know what the thing is, too? Like, I'm not even, like, being, like, just, I guess, mean-spirited or anything. But people like this, with the ping pong, mm -hmm. the 70-year-old guy, you coming into his life was the best thing that could have happened to him. That because, was about to say. Okay, okay. Because you gave him purpose. You gave him a reason, like, to, to try again. You gave him, like, a little spark of something new and sporadic. Something that mm. he, he, a challenge. People need challenges. And the 70 years old, I don't know if he was getting any of that, you know? Interesting. So. What I was going to say is he is not a true lover of the game. Mm. Anyone that is a true lover of any game will love to have someone to rival and enjoy yeah. it and be happy about it. Not how dare he take my title. No, dude. Yeah. There was, um, I don't think, uh, this doesn't happen anymore because I think we kind of dropped it. But there was a good period of time where your dad got into chess a lot. Like he was really into chess. Yeah, he likes, he's always enjoyed chess. Oh, perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. And then he, I think he found out or I made it um, known that I played chess. And I knew the chess game, right? Mm -hmm. And then he challenged me and, and I won. Mm -hmm. And, like, the next few, like, months or something after that, he kept challenging me and kept challenging me because he wanted to win. But your boy ain't ever let him win, bro. So I, I think it's, like... But my dad is not, like, of upsetness. He genuinely... That's what I'm saying. He's like, oh, someone else likes chess. Let me play chess. So that's what I'm talking about. Like, I think people who really love the sport and stuff, or not the sport, but the game, the... Board, yeah. board game sport will have a really good time and they'll want to keep challenging people mm -hmm. like your dad you know your dad was like oh he uh, i didn't win I, and that's why he kept getting the itch to want to play yeah. more and more and i think that's a good way of doing it and i think this guy started off maybe grumpy or maybe he's just playing around maybe you're taking it wrong lp but i think you coming into his life is probably a, if he actually does enjoy ping pong was like you know a blessing in disguise kind of thing yeah so, yeah you enjoyed it i did but what do you guys do but do you guys actually take the offer or just let the old man, you know, keep winning, you know? But with that being said, let's jump over to the next story, okay? Am I the echo for asking my coworker what would happen if I drank her breast milk? My 20 female coworker, Kate, had a baby a little while ago and in the break room during lunch yesterday, she was talking about breastfeeding. During the conversation, I asked Kate, uh, hey, so what would happen if I were to, you know, drink your breast milk? Kate said, 
Excuse me? <laughs> I did realize that it sounded like a weird question when you didn't hear the train of thought leading up to it. So I tried to explain myself and said, I, I mean, is it okay because your body is related to you, but I'd get sick because I don't have your same bacteria, right? Like, you know? Kate didn't answer me. But our other coworker, Lauren, then said, well, it can't be that that's how it works because then wet nurses wouldn't be a thing. I've never heard of a wet nurse. And asked Lauren, what's that? Lauren said, it's when you hire a nanny who had a baby at the same time as you so that she can also breastfeed your baby for you. But it's like an old timey thing. So at this point, Kat said, you guys are being dicks and left. I found out today that she's been telling people that me and Lauren were making fun of her about breastfeeding. So I do understand why Kate would have been uncomfortable with the first way I asked the question because, yes, that was kind of a stupid way to say it. But I don't really understand how she thinks I was making fun of her at all after that. Am I the a-hole? Oh, gosh. You're a poor, unfortunate soul. They're your coworker. Yeah. Can you have coworker conversations, please? Can you talk to me about work and that's it? And... Even then, please don't talk to me about work. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't talk to me at all. Just leave me alone. <laughs> oh, perfect. Um, if you have this question, Google yeah. it, yeah, dude. Yeah, that's Just Google. I would definitely like, think it, and then I'd be like, I should You Google. would definitely ask it. Let's I would not real. ask it. No. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Maybe, all right? There's, there's like a 70-30, all there's like right? 30 is like, I'll ask it. 70 is I won't, right? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not definitely all there. Like, it's not going to be... I'm not gonna ask it all the time, okay? But <laughs> uh, I definitely understand where the train of thought is coming from because I am a I'm a fellow, you know, curious weirdo person or curious uh, member uh -oh. of you know, and so sometimes I I just ask without thinking about stuff, and there's been times where I feel like I've asked really bad weird questions and people are weirded out by me, and it is what it is. And I mean, I have come to accept it, you know, that's just kind of how my life is. Um, but I get it. Like, I, I get that why people are weirded out by stuff like that. And why, why people would not take it well if you ask, like, it's because it's, it's kind of weird because it's like you're almost un indirectly asking, like, can I taste your breast milk to see if it's bad, you know, or something. Yeah. Which definitely Again, not Again, it. it's your coworker. Yeah. Like, if it was a family member or a cousin or something, it definitely would still be weird. But it wouldn't be as bad. So. I don't think I've drank anyone else's breast milk as an adult. That's good. As a kid? <laughs> okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> what, some of your local uh, no. pedestrian was just out here giving breastfed milk? No, milk but uh, my cousin and I are three months apart. Yeah. And I think I, my aunt might have breastfed me at least once. Interesting. I'll ask her. I'm not sure. But I think I remember her saying something like that. Okay. But as an adult, I've never drank anyone's breast milk. And now I'm thinking about it. Would well, it be weird to ask someone, like even family? I think it'd be weird. You think so? I think it'd be weird. I'll say that one. Like, depending on which family member it is. Mm -hmm. But up front, it'd be weird. But I feel like you you could get away with it. And I feel like it Why might be a good Why is it weird? Because it's coming out of somebody's, like, you know, breast. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's, it's like... I don't, I don't ask you, can I drink your, like, um, uh, sweat, you know? Or, like, okay, whatever. Or you don't ask somebody, like, can I drink your sweat? You know, like... You are really bad at comparisons. <laughs> Maybe I am. <laughs> but my point is, like, I think you, you just don't ask anybody if you can drink anything that comes out of their body. Like, I think that's just not... I think it's weird if you ask somebody that, right? That being said, though, curiosity is still flowing up in the brain cycle, And I kind of want to know how breast, you know, milk they tastes like. They say it like. tastes like cantaloupe can can milk. Is it? Well, there's this whole black market kind of thing where, like, uh, bodybuilders supposedly, like, buy breast milk because it has much, much more protein in them mm -hmm. than um, regular milk well, or cow milk. People sell their breast milk because there's some moms that struggle with uh, lactating. So, yeah. Is it weird to drink someone's? I, th I think I'd be down to try it. I think I'd be down to try it, too. <laughs> that being said, I, I think, think it, it is still weird. weird. to ask a family member. No? Would you, like, let's say you're... Your best friend gets pregnant and then has a baby or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, you know, milk coming out of her. Would you would you be okay, cool you're asking making her? making it so uncomfortable. <laughs> would you be cool with asking her if she if you could ask some of that milk? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would be too. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Dude, you would ask her? Uh, I'd, I'd ask you and then I'd be like, is that cool? Because I want to just see I'd, how it I'd is. I'd be like, 
Amiga, Oscar's asking if he can try some of your breast milk. <laughs> I just want to know, dude. I'm curious. Or, or I would ask, and then you would come to me and whisper, like, can you save me some? Yeah, bro. Like, let me just get a little lick up on that. You know, wherever you get it. I don't know. <laughs> I can't. I only You're imagine that you so cup it. You're being so weird about it. How else would what you it? give it? Like, okay, you, okay. Where would you just like throw some of my hand or something? You know, like I don't. Okay, how would you get it? Yes, you should not ask anyone. I'm telling you. <laughs> how else do you get it? Oh, I guess you can just tell him to go to the restroom and just you know get. I don't know. I don't know how any of this. Oh, you pump it out, huh? You pump yes. it into a bottle. You're right, dude. What do you want? Her, you want her to yeah. like squirt it out into your hand? <laughs> That's what I was imagining. <laughs> yes, yes. You should definitely not ask someone, dude. You don't. All right. Well. Oh I, gosh. I guess we got down to the bottom of it. Okay. Now I do gotta say. That you should probably not be t- having these conversations with your coworker. So yeah. it was a slip up. Just go ahead and go apologize, homie. Like that's that's a toughie. You, you shouldn't be. Um, doing I'm so that. sorry. I didn't mean to make fun of you at all. I just was curious. No one around me has had kids in a really long time. You know, I might be the youngest of my family. I don't know what, what his position is. I don't have nieces or nephews. What's a her? I would understand the coworker being even more weirded out if it was a guy. Yeah, but from a girl to a girl. It could still be really awkward, but I'd just be like, I honestly, I was just so curious, and uh, I let my my thoughts come out. Yeah. I should have definitely realized that it might have been inappropriate. I'm sorry. I totally didn't mean it Facts. in any way. And maybe you might be able to get a snatch of that breast. So milk, now that bro. we've cleared the air. Can I get <laughs> that? <laughs> Yo, can you just drip a little bit on my hand? <laughs> like... <laughs> Not like that, Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's that's wild, dude. You're wild. Okay. <laughs> now that you clear the air, can I can I just snatch up some to for the road? <laughs> like Do you have any extra? There is nothing on this story. You wanna hear it? Yeah. Alright, update time. So on Friday afternoon, I went to Kate and told her, Hey, I wanted to say sorry about yesterday. I get now that I asked a really inappropriate question and I'm sorry for making you uncomfortable. And I understand that you felt like I was making fun of you, but that wasn't my intention. I'm sorry it came out sounding that way. Kate said, okay, hold on. You were really just trying to ask about the germs in milk or whatever it was? I said, yeah, I know it sounded bad, but I swear that's all I meant. Kate said, well, if it was a genuine question, then I'm sorry also. I shouldn't have assumed ill intent. I said, it's okay. Like I said, I'm sorry. Kate said, don't worry about it. And then that was the end of that. And everything seemed fine. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, that was a little nice. That, that that's the whole episode of the uh, the whole theme of this episode. Nice little twist. Yeah, you know, it's no, that's genuinely really cool. That both of them were. She was like, "Oh shoot, you were actually asking a question. I'm sorry. I thought that was a dumb question. So I, in my head, could not even imagine that being a legit a question. Yeah, that's why I thought you were making fun of me. It definitely, honestly, when I was reading the story, like like in the beginning of this little portion of the episode. I felt like I was a teacher in ed class because it literally seemed that way. Oh, is breast milk bad? No, it's not like that. Well, you see, there's wet nurses. And when the wet nurses do, like, oh, you know, it just yeah. seemed like a very, like, uh, educational, special kind of thing. So it was definitely weird that she's gone this far being alive without knowing that. Dude, you know? now I'm curious. Is it bad to drink someone's breast milk? Let us know out there. Well, is it bad? First question. Well, I is don't it think bad? it's bad, but is it, like, weird to want to? Well, <laughs> two questions there's an is episode it, on friends where where that's that's happening? a question yeah all right well let us know what you guys do would you guys drink the, the milk of the breast or and also um uh, is <gasps> that weird question. to ask would you be offended if someone asks you and you like let's say i'm pregnant or i i okay. i'm breastfeeding and someone can i try some and i'm like oh yeah i have like a an extra bottle or whatever here try it would i feel offended if they're like that tastes gross like, would that offend my feelings? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> oh, this is sour ass milk, bro. Uh. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Yo, I worked hard to make this milk, dude. What are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. It'd be weird if the person, I think it'd be weird both ways. Like, what if the person was like, oh my God, this is the best milk I've ever, can I have more? This is the best milk I've ever had. I think both would be like, oh, this is my milk, dude. Like, chill. <laughs> you know? I think both are. Are very bad. Next story. <laughs> Just one page. All right. Am I the hijo for taking potatoes off a guy's plate at a wedding? I just got back from my friend's wedding in Mexico. It was fancy and all inclusive. 
everyone mostly did their own thing with only a few group events planned. Other than the wedding and reception, obviously, one of the group activities was dinner out at one of the restaurants that required a reservation. It was beautiful, and the service was fantastic. One hiccup. The best man did not want potatoes. He wasn't allergic. Potatoes did not take out his parents in a dark alley, and he wasn't sworn to avenge them. As far as I know, anyways. I speak Spanish, and after he asked me, I asked the waiter to please not serve him potatoes. Well, you know where this is going. He was maliciously served potatoes, and he would not shut up about it. He pointed out to everyone at our table that he had been served a starchy tuber against his will. Other tables were watching him and listening to him getting upset about the potatoes. He ate the rest of his meal, but would not drop the potatoes. I couldn't take it anymore. I reached over and grabbed the potatoes with my hand and put them on my plate, and then I ate them. He just sat there stunned. Then he got up and went to his suite. He avoided me the rest of the time there, but he made sure to tell everyone what an asshole I was and how unladylike my behavior was. I just wanted him to shut the f up about the potatoes. My friend wants me to apologize for causing drama in my life home. I love it. Get it. Get it. Bro, I steal more potatoes if I could. It's the fact that she did that to shut him up, but didn't say, there, you can shut up about it now. Yeah. No, it, it was... Oh, good. It's a good flow. Good flow. Yeah. I don't get people like that, bro. Like, I feel like I don't get... Maybe maybe the restaurant was actually super expensive. Maybe that's why I just haven't gone to an expensive enough restaurant to be upset about it. But, like, if food gets to my table and I didn't want that, I don't care. I'm just going to move it aside and eat it. Like, there's just... Why make a big deal? I'm still getting good food. Like, I, unless it was, like, the whole ass plate was, like, a 90% potato and, like... A little bit of like meat or, or something. Unless it's something that kind of um, spills or the taste of it stains the taste of the other stuff. Because there's some things that I don't know could. Yeah, I get you. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like just runs onto the other food yeah. and gets it like soggy and potato y tasty and stuff. If it's something like I don't like the taste of tomato. That's true. And I'll have it in some things, you know, and um, I'm fine and I enjoy it. Yeah. But for the most part, I don't like the taste of the tomato. And I can sometimes, if if tomato is touching something else, and then I eat that something else, uh, that doesn't taste good. Yeah, I guess you're right. I think it's only bad if it's running. But I, I gotta say, I, I the fact that she could reach out and grab it, I think it's a sign that it wasn't that big of a deal. Like, I, I'm not, I, I agree with you only because same way with blue cheese. You throw blue cheese onto my freaking salad, bro. I'm done, though. There's no way you can eat that salad, dude. Yeah. So much blue cheese everywhere. Yeah. Oh man, you know. It was weird to grab it with the hand, though, to be like. <laughs> when yeah, I mean. when I, you read the title, I figured it would be, I grabbed the plate, you know, the, and then I put it back or something. Oh, I get you, I get you. But just. What I want to know is like, <laughs> <laughs> yo, you gotta chill. <laughs> she ate it. <laughs> um, what I want to know is how come she's, she can speak Spanish and told the waiters like, yo, don't give potatoes to this crab baby over here because, you know, he's going to throw a fit. Why did they still give him potatoes? It was an accident, dude. Accidents happen. What if she speaks Spanish? <laughs> it's all broken and like in the, it's just English, but they add the O at the end. Mas potato, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I it just a, the whole plate is potatoes. Yeah. Uh, uh, he shouldn't have been that much of an a hole, you know. I mean, I'm pretty extra sometimes, and you're extra, but you're not like. Uh, annoying I'm gonna mess everyone's uh, Like yeah, make everyone else Have a bad time as well nah, Like you're not gonna be Standing up and like Freaking screaming Look out Look at your these lungs. potatoes I oh, can't potatoes. believe the potatoes Yeah just, Oh potatoes The rest of the food was great But all oh, these potatoes <laughs> Yeah like uh, You gotta chill with that Too much Too much You wanna hear a top comment here? Yeah Alright top comment is Not that cool It's great that you Put sunglasses on Got to the root of the matter I don't get it. You don't get it? <laughs> Potatoes have roots. Okay. You got to the root of the matter. Okay, I guess it was a good joke, person. Funny. It was a good joke. I, I, yo, you deserve all the um, awards and stuff that you're getting for that comment. Somebody else said, not that cool. You're the hero we didn't know we needed. But yes, you took away what he really wanted. To play the victim and whine like a child. Once that opportunity was gone, he had no reason to stay, so he left. Mm -hmm. And there was much rejoicing. That's what I was thinking too. I was like, he's fit. like, you just 
this was my bit for the next three hours. <laughs> That's all I had, lady. <laughs> yeah. I slipped the waiter a note to give me potatoes so I can do this, dude. I'm a, a professional complainer. Gosh. This resort is amazing. The events have been amazing. I had finally found one thing to complain about. And you took that away from me. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. This person sucks. Ready for the last story? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie to you. This last story. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, I literally saved this story to, for the last because it's just bad. It's a bad last story. Alrighty. Bad. All right. If you guys are uncomfortable with things, leave now because <laughs> disclaimer this is a bad story bro <sighs> okay <sighs> all right am i the echo for leaving the restaurant after my sister flirted with my girlfriend and made her uncomfortable my 19 male sister Haley, 20 female not real name is a very open and flirty person she's never put a label on her sexuality but she has said she's attracted to everyone Ever since we were in high school, she'd often flirt with the girls I was interested in. She also flirt with my friends when they'd come over to hang out. Sometimes, Haley would even come into my room without knocking just to talk to them. It was very uncomfortable, and some of my friends even stopped coming over to my house because of it. This made me really angry, and I told our parents, 45 male and 42 female, but they'd always say I'm being homophobic and to leave her alone. So, she'd always get away with it. A few months after she graduated, she moved out of the house, and I haven't had to deal with her flirting with my friends anymore. Seven months ago, I met my now girlfriend, Layla, 18 female, and we really hit it off. We've been together a little over four months now. One thing to know about Layla is that she's really shy, so she never voices any concerns until after the fact. Well, I really wanted her to meet my parents, so we set up a quick dinner at a nice restaurant on Tuesday night. Without even telling me, my parents invited Haley, who was almost 30 minutes late. For the better part of the dinner, she would constantly flirt with my girlfriend. She'd give Layla compliments about her clothing, body, facial features, and even offer her number multiple times. My parents would just laugh along with her antics, saying it's just how she normally is. But I could clearly see Layla was uncomfortable, so I paid my side of the bill and took her home. When we got to her house, I asked if I could spend the night, and she said yes. And that's where I've been for the past few days. My parents and Haley have been blowing up my phone calling me all sorts of names, which has me thinking I was in the wrong. I haven't answered any of my sister's messages, but I told my mom where I am. When I asked Layla about it, she said the compliments were nice at first, but she got uncomfortable. So am I the a-hole for making a big deal out of my sister flirting with my girlfriend? And before we jump, before we even dissect this, there's an update to this story. Okay. And I hate that update. But go ahead. Do you want to start with the update? Okay, let's go to the... uh, Actually, you know what? Yeah, let's go do the update right away. Okay. Because you guys are going to hate this as much as I hate it, okay? Alrighty. Okay. Update. Two days later. Sorry this update took a few days. Friday night, I messaged my mom and dad to let them know I wouldn't be conversing with them unless Layla was giving an apology. Up to this point, that still hasn't been received, and I don't think it ever will. I also let them know I'd be stopping by on Saturday to pick up my things from the house. Well, Saturday morning, I go over to the house and brought my girlfriend's dad, who we'll call Carl, to help me out. Sitting on the porch is my sister, who tells me immediately she wants to talk. Anyways, we go inside and sit down, which is when she says she has to tell me something without me freaking out. Basically, in a much more dimmed-down version, my sister tells me she has had feelings for me since high school, which is when I started going to the gym and slimming out a lot more. She said the main reason she flirted, with, she flirted with all of my friends is because she wanted to divert her attraction somewhere else. According to her, this is also the reason she moved out so quickly because she couldn't stand being around me and knowing she couldn't have me. I left. I didn't get any of my stuff. And honestly, I don't know if I'll ever go back to get it. I blocked my sister on everything as soon as I got back to my girlfriend's house and my mom keeps messaging me telling me to apologize for walking out again. I don't know how to feel. I'm absolutely disgusted. I feel like throwing up all the time and not sure how I'm supposed to get up and go to work tomorrow like everything's normal. I haven't told my girlfriend or her dad yet, and I don't know if I'm going to. I have no idea if my mom or dad knows, but even thinking about it makes me my head hurt. This is so much worse than I thought it was. What the fuck? I know a lot of people might start commenting about how this is fake, and I don't really care. I wish it was. There's another update after this, but that's so gross. I'm telling you, this is a bad story, man. But it, it's a twist. It's it's the theme of the episode is a twist, and we yo, we 
we go through these Reddit stories, bro. So you the know, girl's nineteen. The sister's nineteen. How old is he? I can take a quick look. I know that he's over like eighteen. That's for sure. It doesn't matter. So the sister is twenty, and he is nineteen. It does not matter. This is so gross. What the How does this hell even went happen? Wrong? <laughs> Yo, you're right. What the hell did go wrong, dude? How does this happen, bro? Oh. I just. All right. Yeah. All right. I mean, this can't be extremely unique. Because. Um, yeah. Well, hopefully it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is not uh, the first time it has ever happened. You know? Yeah. I talk about friends a lot, but there's an episode in Friends where one of the friends is dating someone who is super close with his sister. Oh, yeah, I remember now. Uncomfortably close yeah. with his sister. So these stories come from somewhere, you know? I guess people could imagine them out of their blue, but, like, that's kind of disturbing. Um, they come out of somewhere. I mean, there's it's a big world out here. It's definitely not, like... The first time it's happened. Like, there's definitely a lot of... There has to be a lot of cases where this happened. Whether it's sister, whether it's cousin, whether whatever it is, family member, aunt, whatever it is, like, it it happens, you know? Okay, I'll say something. <laughs> All right. I think it, little kids are weird. Yeah. So little kids can be confused about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like the start of this, okay. <laughs> Disclaimer. But as soon as kids realize what family means, yeah, it goes away. Yeah, you know, like uh, you have a, a niece. She is, I think, she's eight. like six now. Oh, eight? Oh, yeah. No, no, she's older. Yeah, she's older. Yeah, I think she's eight now. Mm -hmm. And um, there was definitely a time where she didn't understand. Uh, yes, this is my grandma, and this is my mom, but yeah. doesn't understand that. Your grandma is your mom's, mom's mom. mom yeah. You know, doesn't understand family yeah, relationships like that. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. Um, but once you do, <laughs> things go away. And the reason I'm saying that is because I've definitely heard of um, younger kids being like, oh, I think he's attractive. And it's like, oh, that's, yeah. that's your cousin. And he is like 30 and you're whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, but it goes away. I mean... I guess not on all cases. <laughs> this is worse because this was yeah. like, oh, that's my brother. And then it's like, oh, my brother's going to a jam. That is weird. <laughs> that's weird. I don't know. I, I feel like, okay, she's like open to anything. And I think I think the fact that she's that she is open to anything, like she went through the wrong door, you know? And she started that's catching why feelings. She and that's says weird. that she loves everyone. Yeah, like oh, that's too much. Like you took it too far, she girl. She met everyone. Like yeah, <laughs> like you you gotta chill with the. Oh, that's that's bad. I I saved it to the as the last story because I don't, I didn't want any of you guys to hear. It, but yo, we gotta cover this stuff, man. Don't we? Yo, we pride ourselves in being a good Reddit storytelling channel, and yo, this is this is a good one. It's up okay. There. What what is your advice? What, what do you do? Maybe unblock her and send her a message like, hey, that's not good. Like, that's not right. And I honestly don't want to, like, talk to you or have any sort of, like, um, engagement with you until you talk to, like, some sort of therapist that can help you through these mixed feelings because it's not natural and it's not right. And similar with the parents where I feel like I need some sort of apology, at least to my girlfriend first. If not necessarily going no contact or or, like forever no contact just like yo like my girlfriend it felt uncomfortable in this event and you guys just laughed it off at least like say sorry and that's it you know you don't you don't have to be like hugely apologetic but just like say sorry that you made him feel uncomfortable by like letting my sister flirt with her all night you know but first and foremost is put your priority streets with your sister because that 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 ain't good bro that is not good <laughs> so have her figure that stuff out first how would you handle Letting your parents know. I'd have to just tell them up front. There's no easy way of doing it. You oh, have to you just tell, tell her them. to tell them. Or you tell mm. them to ask her. I'd probably I'd oh dang. I'd probably tell my sister to ask to tell my parents. And if she doesn't do it within like a, a couple of weeks or something, I'd probably go to my parents and be like, yo. Dude, how awkward. How do you go? It's all hey, your mom, fault. Dad. How do you guys raise this child? Hey mom and dad. Um, I know it's been tense around here. 
Sure has. And I wanted you, I wanted to clear the air and let you know what's been going on. All right, clear it up. What's up? You know, ex name. She likes me. Like, she likes, likes me. Get how, how ridiculous <laughs> does that sound, dude? Family's over. Just start over, <laughs> you know? Get out oh, of there. All right, real. there's the last update. You want to hear the last update? I don't know, man. All right. Please <laughs> tell me that the first thing was a lie. She's covering something else up. Let's hear the last update. Okay. Eight days later. Last Tuesday, I messaged my parents telling them everything my sister had told me. It wasn't until Thursday I got a reply where they called me all sorts of names. They said I was perverted, a liar, a man-child, etc. However, after messaging back and forth with them for a while, it came out on my mom's side that my sister confirmed my story and wanted me to say it was fake because neither of them wanted to believe it. It's safe to say I have no intention of talking to either of them for a long time. I told my girlfriend everything on Tuesday as well. She was a lot more supportive than I initially thought, so that worked out pretty well. On Friday... We told her father and we started looking for apartments to move in together. As for all of my things back at my parents' house, my girlfriend's dad and a few of my friends went to pick up my stuff without me. I gave them a list of all the necessary things. My friends don't know why I moved out, but just that it was serious and not to ask. Which leads us to today. I know a few people on my update post commented about this being fake and as much as I wish it was, this is the hell I'm living in. Over the past week, I've been looking back to my sister and I's relationship and realized a lot of stuff that isn't normal. I'd give examples, but I just want this to be over with. Thanks for the support, and this will probably be the last update. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Your family really is over. I think it's done, so. I, like, I mean, you, I don't know. The only way that this could be okay is you have a relationship with your parents, and then your parents have a relationship with your sister. But this family unit... Definitely it, broken. How do you even get past that? Uh, therapy, I think. Dude, I don't know. Maybe one day. Five years later, I will always feel uncomfortable. Maybe one day you guys can laugh about it. Remember that time, dude? Remember that time you used to actually be in love with me, dude? <laughs> do you remember you that time? You could do that if you were, if you guys were <laughs> little. Yeah. No, it's definitely weird. I definitely think the whole relationship of like the family is gonna be like in dark times for a fat minute, but just all therapy everybody everybody go and see somebody talk about this because this is too much mm, too much i don't like it i don't like it what <laughs> went wrong what, what went wrong? wrong i i don't know <laughs> but maybe you guys can figure it out let us know what you guys what you guys think about this and uh i mean hopefully this hasn't happened to you guys but it has let us know how you guys got over you know, this something it's making me like feel like ick but mm. it shouldn't be you know i think it's okay to compliment your siblings yeah that's fine but it, stuff that's like this makes it icky yeah you know like i should be able to say yeah my brothers are handsome mm -hmm. and that'd be fine yeah but people like that make that gross yeah i think it just depends where it's coming from yeah <laughs> But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Hey, we covered everything here, baby. I Come had on. a till. Uh, yeah, it got it got real weird at the end. But regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know there was a lot of twists and turns on this one. Some that we didn't even want, but we got. And uh, stick around. Put a comment in the you know comment section. Leave a like. Helps us out. Really good for the algorithm. And uh, watch. <laughs> watch some of our other episodes you know at the end of this uh you'll you'll be able to click on another episode keep watching keep watching it's good stuff and like we always say hope you guys have a great day great week great month great year great second great millisecond great life um uh, november is up so hope you guys you know have a great haul you know thanksgiving bird eating um time and we'll see you guys in the next one Bye. Bye. Anybody who's new who's looking at this video for the first time, subscribe, bro. Join us in this crazy neighborhood of ours and, uh, you know, just have some fun, silly times with us. Hear some Reddit stories and let's see where the heck this goes. We'll see you in the next one. Laters.